we give you all the praise, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We adore you. We glorify you, the beauty of your holiness. There is no one like unto you, Lord, and there is none to compare with you. Ancient of days, the great I am, the beginning, the end. You are the Alpha, Lord, and you are the Omega. I just want to say thank you, Lord, for another time in your presence. I want to say thank you because you are gracious, you are holy, you are mighty. I want to say thank you because you've inscribed us on the palms of your hands. I want to say thank you because I know, Lord, that you are in our business, you are in our corner. Your word says you are going to be a God to us, Lord. Thank you, O Lord Jehovah, Father Lord, because our walls are always before you. Thank you, O Lord Jehovah, because you will never leave us, and Lord, you will never forsake us. And so we just give you praise. We just give you honor. We give you glory. We give you adoration. Hallowed be your name forever and ever. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. We have been reading the book of Leviticus, and I know that it feels like, oh my God, when are we going to finish? But it's just good for you to understand what Jesus did for you on the cross of Calvary. It's also good for you to know that you have a part to play in this covenant as a royal priesthood. We are priests unto our God. And we want to thank God because we have a high priest who is constantly interceding on our behalf. We just bless and exalt his name. I, Whenever I think about what the Lord has done and what he's still doing, I can but say I am so, so very grateful that I'm called by his name. He did what no one will do for us it became sin and so we are seeing all these different offerings that God commanded the children of Israel to bring oh my goodness the whole bond offering the grain offering the absolution offering the compensation offering and different kinds of offering it's good you know about them because it gives you it makes you see the heart of God, right? You may not do exactly what they're saying because God is not expecting you, you know, to bring um, to bring flour that has no olive and to bring you no know, different things. But one thing is sure, God wants you to present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him. God wants us to daily carry our cross and follow him. God wants us not to lean onto our own understanding, but we should in all our ways acknowledge him. God does not want us to be wise in our own eyes. And that's something I want to delve into today. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Read the scripture so you know what God expects us to do. Always read the scripture and don't form, I do know. Okay, I know that. Oh, I don't want that. Don't be a selective person. In the very scripture, see, I've seen a lot of things. Honestly, I didn't want to read this to so everybody. The Leviticus, I said, oh, they're not going to be interested. And God told me and asked me, what's your business? Just do what you're supposed to do. Just read it. I am speaking and I'm ministering to everyone, you know, at different levels. Everyone under the sound of your voice. Just listen because they may not be able to read it by themselves. And that's the reason why I asked you to be reading it out to them. But before then, I want us to go to the book of Proverbs chapter 3 because we're on the third of Remember, we read a proverb a day. 
it's so important that you read a proverb a day so it just helps you okay you you draw a lot of wisdom and revelation from the book of proverbs it's is i love to read it because sometimes it just speaks directly to me and makes me see okay so you can't do that thing that thing is so dumb don't do this and it helps and so i also raised my kids on proverbs so whenever i tell, tell them <laughs> read a particular proverb my son will say mom what have i done i'll say just read a proverb you know just read the word of god and when you get there you'll get to know what you have done and usually they always get it the word of god is good proverbs chapter 3 the bible says it from verse 1 my child never never forget the things i have taught you never forget the things i have taught you so one of the strategies of the enemy is to remove from your mind the word of god when it matters the most you just forget what you're supposed to do you know that this is what have you ever been in a situation where you know you you are struggling you're struggling and somebody suddenly just gives you an advice and uses a scripture and you're like oh my god that's what i should have just done <laughs> We, 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 we just struggle and struggle and struggle because, not because you don't want to see God, it's because what the enemy does at that moment is to make you forget what you're meant to be doing. One, you forget to pray. You say, okay, how can you stay in one place and just be roaming around, you know, getting entering into your stuff you're looking for something and you have looked for it for hours you've looked for it for days you can't find it yet you have not prayed once about that situation you've not told god lord i need to find this thing because if i don't find this thing so and so and so, and so please give me direction and leave it like that you'll be amazed i have seen this walk over and over you just walk toward that thing because it's God oh you you just get to a place that you didn't intend going and then you go find the thing there I always tell people it's either it's always been there or it walked through the place because you committed it into the hands of God God says make sure you commit all your ways into my hands sometimes we worry so much it almost drowns us yet we have not remembered a word that God has spoken. God says, my child, never forget the things I have taught you. One of the ways to ensure you don't is please study to show yourself approved. Get a book and type. If you want to use your computer, make sure that whenever you're studying, you are writing. It helps you to retain that which you are learning. I mean, that's what you do in school. God says, never forget the things I have taught you. Never. It's a strong word. Never forget the things that I've taught you. Store my commands in your heart. The do's that I say you should do, store them in your heart. Don't forget, there is one thing that I want to remind you today that you should never forget is that God says, be fruitful, multiply. Subdue the earth, replenish the earth. Always remember, I am made from, for productivity. Don't forget that. So whatever you are doing, make sure that you are profiting for God hates an unprofitable servant. The Bible says, I am the vine, you are the branches. Any brand that doesn't bear fruit will be cut off. You are made for productivity. So every day of your life, never forget I was created to be fruitful and multiply. I was created to be productive. I was created to make profits. I was talking to one of the sisters. The person said, I don't know. I just like doing things for people free. And 
I lack. They all just go. I said, the truth is you are not being nice because God hates an unprofitable servant. If God gives you a gift, the gift of a man makes room for you. Whatever you have, God is expecting that you profit through it. <laughs> There's a message for another day. I don't know why he said it. I think somebody needs it. Store my commands in your heart. What is it that you're meant to be doing that you're not doing? What is it that you're supposed to be doing that you're not doing? And what you're not supposed to be doing that you're doing? Store my commands in your heart. So whenever things are not going on well, get into your closet and just close your eyes and try and just pray and say, God, show me. Show me, Lord, I have this word in my heart. Bring it up, Holy Spirit. Remind me. The Holy Spirit reminds you of everything that you have learned. Store my commands in your heart. If you do this, if you store my commands in your heart and you never forget what I have taught you, if you do this, you will live many years. It's going to give you longevity of life if you do this. If you keep my commandments, if you store my words in your heart, you will live many years. And not just live for fun. The Bible says, and your life will be satisfying. That is your portion in the name of Jesus. You won't just live, but you will live a fulfilled life in the name of Jesus. But the instruction is, make sure you never forget the teachings of the Lord and store his commands in your heart. Verse 3, never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Never let loyalty, faithfulness, and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. What are you writing? Loyalty. Faithfulness. Commitment. Don't let it leave you. What God is saying is don't be that person who is like an opera. Be faithful, be committed, not just to, to, to what God wants you to do. Don't do it today and not do it tomorrow. Write them in your heart. Let faithfulness, let, let New, New King James Version says, let not mercy and truth forsake you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And that's how you find favor. High esteem in the sight of God and men. Faithfulness. Mercy. Kindness. Truth. Whatever translation you want to take. Don't allow them to forsake you. Let me see. Message translation says, Don't lose your grip on love and loyalty. Tie them around your neck. Carve their initials on your heart. Earn a reputation for living well in God's eyes and in the eyes of men. Don't allow kindness. Don't allow mercy. Don't allow love. Don't allow the, all the fruit of the Spirit. Let them be your guide. Keep them if you want to find favor with God and with men. I, I, talking about, you know, mercy, talking about loyalty, I can, I can preach that the whole year. It is good to be faithful. It is good to be loyal. It is good to stick to what God wants you to do. I, I, I was suddenly reminded of a story. Uh, I was talking to a client and she narrated something that was, that, that jerked my memory. 
So many years ago, I used to serve in a ministry and I, I loved, I love, I love ministry, God. I love to be in the midst of God's people. Every part of ministry, I love to, you know, be part of it. I've, I've always been, I was once in, in the children's section. I was once in the, I used to be a choir director for a long time. I used to be a worship leader and I used to be an admin officer. I used to be in charge of ev evangelism at some point in a ministry. I used to be, you know, prayer coordinator in a ministry. I used to, I just, I just love, I love, I used to preach in the ministry. I, I used to be an admin in, in the ministry. I used to be um, the, the house fellowship coordinator in a ministry. And I used to be in a, the Bible school uh, department in the ministry. Uh, I used to be technical in a ministry. I just, I just love ministry. And so when, I, when I look back right now, I think I, I love ministry because I was afraid of people. I just believe that it is safer to be in ministry because the people at least will not be haters. They will not, they will not, you know, betray you. They will not backstab you. Back in the day, I didn't know why. I would just not want to work anywhere where I don't see believers. I just wanted to be in the ministry. I didn't want to work. I never knew I would ever, you know, do anything secular. I just wanted to be in ministry. I thought I was really doing for God, but honestly, I think I was really, 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 you know, I was, I know I, I was really traumatized and I didn't really like people. I was really afraid of people. Then God showed me people are people. It's what, what matters is the relationship people have with me has nothing to do with whether they're in church or not. And so I was, um, anytime I'm in a ministry, honestly, I'm always thinking about how to help. I love help ministry. I love to help you know, servants of God. I love to, I'm always thinking, you would think I'm the, I'm the, I'm the lead pastor. Anywhere I go, you would think, you know, I put it on my head. That is what I love to do. I make rules and that are very, very, very hard. Like I would tell every choir member, you need to be in church at six, even though the service is starting at nine or 10, everybody will be there at six. I am, you see, I, my life used to be very, very, I would, I was always invested in it. I'm talking about faithfulness and i remember that one time i i i said I, I think we need leadership school or bible school and so i asked my pastor for, for permission and he said okay you can go ahead and do it and so i made flyers and i got to you know a lot of you know overseers i gave them their topics and made um handouts and told them you know just come and bless us and things like that and got people to come in from different denominations and the first group the first class were, were all, more than 100 people and of course they came in and um why we you know we're doing it of course money was coming in and of course i had to pay on radium to the people that were preaching and the the accounts the accounts department of the church started getting very very upset with what i was doing because to them what they were not they were not seeing what i was doing what they were seeing is they were calculating the number of people that were in class and how much they were paying and that was what they were interested in and so one day we needed batteries for our microphone and so i went into the account department and said please can i can i have some money just to buy batteries and i heard no Go and take money from that money you're collecting and things like that. I said, I, I don't understand. I don't follow. And at that point, I thought it was a joke. And so, and there was money all over the table. So I said, let me just have this. So in the process of trying to take money, the accountant, you know, covered the money and my nail kind of scratched her. And she ran straight to the lead pastor and said, I came in there and I started harassing her and showed him the blood and said, as a matter of fact, I injured her. I thought I was in a movie. As I said, w w what's going on? What's going on? And I was disciplined for it. I, I, I did it. I couldn't even imagine that could happen in the house of the Lord. And... 
that was not the part that really hit me. God, I went to God and I was crying. I said, God, I'm just doing everything for the church growth. I'm doing everything to make sure every, you know, the church is moving forward. And God said, I know. You will go now to the accountant and go to the lead pastor and you go and apologize for whatever they say you have done. I said, God, I'm not going to do that. I can't, because I didn't do what they said. I, God said, you will have to go and do it because I know what I'm doing. That was the hardest thing I ever did in my life. I didn't know that apologizing could be that hard. <laughs> it was just to say, I'm sorry, but I, I, I felt, you know, it wasn't just, but I did it. And what happened after that time dazed me so much. Weeks after that, there was a graduation and there was um, an ordination and people came from everywhere. The, way they, they, the altar was filled with anointed men of God, bishops. There were many of them. And the crowd we saw in church that day, my pastor was like, I can't believe this. We had this overflow and things like that. And my pastor was so, was so happy that day. And so as the ordination was going on, my pastor said he feels in the spirit that someone needs to be blessed today. And he called me up and called all the servants of God to lay hands on me. And that was the day I was ordained the reverend. And God told me, this was what the devil saw and he wanted to take you out. When you allow faithfulness and loyalty, when you allow it to sink into your heart and life, you will find favor with God and with men. You need to understand that the ways of God is different from the way of man, as high as the heaven is. And as deep as the earth is, so is our ways far away from God's ways. It, 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 it doesn't really take you on a straight path. It's going to be hard. It's going to, it's going to tell on your flesh. And do you know that as the moment I, I narrated the story to the, 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 the person I was talking to, she said she knows what to do. And then... I finished with her and I, I got into another session and the person had the same issue. And the person said, you know what? I, I, I love my church. I love my church. I love, I love the message of my pastor, but my pastor said something and it hurt me so much. And so I stopped going to church. He said, I've not been going and I've not been where I used to be. The joy I used to have, I've not had it. And I narrated the same story to her. She said, so I can go to church. I said, go to, go to the church. God, the devil saw something and he wanted to take you out. Go to the house of the Lord. You will, whenever God puts you in a place, it's not always going to be rosy. Your loyalty will be tested. It will be tested. And that's when you need to turn to God. It will be hard. You want to leave. You want to abandon that place. But please, don't allow anger or forgiveness. Don't allow a human being to take you away from where God has planted you. It says, your let loyalty and kindness, let them not leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Oh God, this I didn't know this was where God was taking me today. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people and you will earn a good reputation. You will find favor. Verse five, trust in the Lord with all your heart. With not some of your heart, with all your heart. Don't trust men. Some people get angry because men disappointed them. Because the vows you, you took on the altar, your partner has violated them. God says, don't put your trust in the arm of flesh. Trust in the Lord 
with all your heart. Whenever people tell me they're upset and I say, tell me what has happened. And I perceive that they're upset because they trusted someone who eventually failed them. Sometimes I get so, so annoying and I ask them, who told you to trust that person? And he said, am I not supposed to know? The Bible says, trust in the Lord. Trust God for them. Don't trust them. Why do we have to pray for them? It's because we know that they're in the flesh and they're able to do it. They trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean onto your own understanding. Not even your understanding shall be trusted. Don't lean onto your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Seek His will in all that you do. Everything that you do. Seek the will of God. God, are you here? Should I be here? God, should I still be here? Sometimes God will say, yes, be there. And then there are times God will say, your time is up. So you need to seek God at all times. Seek God all the time. Acknowledge him in all your ways. There are days that I'm ready to go to certain places. And I'll ask God again, are you sure about this, Lord? Am I meant to go here? I don't want to go to a place that you have not asked me to go. I don't want to go a place and go and get embarrassed there. I God just tell me if I'm meant to be there or not. And I and I will call it quit if you say no. Should I do this, Lord? It's so important you know that as we live on this earth. That's why you need to give your body unto God. So the body doesn't say, no, let us go, let us go. We need to go there, we need to go there. Because it's always talking. The Bible says, seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. When you seek him, he will show you which path to take. Verse 7 says, don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Don't be so impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Let me get back to New King James Version. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't, don't do stuff and say, yeah, I think, I think, I think. Stop doing things based on I think, I think, I think. Seek the Lord. Acknowledge him. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And you know what? If you do that, there's another benefit. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Fearing the Lord and departing from evil heals you. No wonder God says in his word, if anyone is sick amongst you, say, let them call the elders and let them anoint the person with oil. For the prayer of faith will make the sick whole. And if there's any sin, let's confess one to another. It gives healing. Because sometimes the reason for sickness is sin. Not all the time. It says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. I am a, a, a testifier to this. So whenever you are in God's presence, See, there are certain things that I'm not sure they're evil or not, but I'm very, very careful person. I don't go to everywhere. I don't do everything people do. I always tell people, the Bible says, flee from every appearances of evil. Sometimes when it just appears like it, I'm not even sure. I just, I don't bind, I flee. I'm, I will not be part of it. I will just run. I don't, I, I don't honor every invitation. I don't appear everywhere that people appear. 
It's all a way of making sure the Bible says a wise man foresee a danger and hide it himself. And a foolish man will go into it. I don't eat everywhere. I just try, you know, my best to just keep myself in God. All things are lawful, not all things are expedient. There are a lot of things I don't do that are not really sane, but I just don't do them because they're not helpful to me. I always tell people when I meet them, especially when I, I am counseling like couples and somebody says, I don't know, you were so mean yesterday. I'll ask a question and they, most times they tell me, yes, w were you drinking? And they say, yes, come on, leave that thing. Another person was telling me, you know, we're having issues. I said, you were having issues yesterday. What happened? They narrated a story to me. I said, hmm, where did you get that from? He said, TikTok. I said, then leave it. <laughs> Don't just move away from it. It's not helping you. If you listen to it and you now have a problem in your marriage, come on, just drop that thing. Don't, li don't listen to it. You don't know how to censor things, so don't bother. So n n all things are lawful, not all things are expedient. If it is not helping you, dump it. You don't need it. There's some relationship, there's some people that are really good, they're not just good for you. If you think they're pulling you down, they're not making you move forward in faith, dump them. It's not by force. You don't want be, you don't want to miss heaven because of anybody. There is no relationship worth that is worthy, so worthy that makes you lose God. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones when you fear the Lord and depart from evil. Nine, honor the Lord with your possession. We've been talking, we've been reading the book of Leviticus. Honor the Lord with your possessions, not with some of your possession, with everything that you have. Honor God. And I always tell people, the first possession you have is your body. Honor the Lord with your body. Honor the Lord with your money. Honor the Lord with your family. There is nothing that you have that God did not give to you. Not just that. And with the first fruits of all your increase as you're increasing let me explain that to you the first fruit of all your increase for instance you used to earn a thousand dollars and then you're given a thousand five hundred dollars the increase you have is five hundred dollars that is the first fruit of that increase that you have Honor the Lord with it. Honor the Lord with all your increase. Honor the Lord with all your possession. So don't say, God, this is your portion. Say, God, all that I have belong to you. Because sometimes, depending on your relationship with God, God may demand from you more than he will demand from another person. So who much is given, what much is expected. Honor the Lord with your possession and with the first fruit of all your increase. There are times that God will tell you, give me everything. But see, trust him enough and don't lean on to your own understanding. He knows what he's doing. He told Abraham, that child that you like, come and give that child to me. So God wants to be sure that the provision is not higher in your eyes than the provider. That the creation is no more adored than the creator. You have to let him know somehow that God, all I have belongs to you. And there is nothing I will be able to withhold from you. That's what covenant is all about. Honor the Lord with all your possession and with the first fruit of all your increase. Why and what will happen? So your barns will be filled with plenty. You can't outgive God. Whenever your cloud is full, your rain will fall. If it has not fallen, it means it's not full enough for the cloud to condense. Just keep giving. One day you would go to, some people would just go to, a, maybe they would change ministry and now give a little there and God blesses them. They will say, God bless me in this ministry. That's not true. <laughs> it's the same God. Your cloud just became full and your rain began to fall. It says, 
so your bands will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Verse 11, we're reading Proverbs chapter 3. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. We read this yesterday in the book of Hebrews 12, that it's the person that the Lord loves that he disciplines. Don't despise the chastening of the Lord. The story I told today, I said, God told me to go and apologize to the accountant and to the lead pastor, even though I believed in my heart that I had not done anything. The Bible says, follow peace with all men. Don't despise the chastening of the Lord. Sometimes it's hard. Some people, they hear things from the pulpit and they get upset and leave. <laughs> I don't like those me that we're talking about. Do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. Let me get that from New Living Translation. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you. There are some people that say they will not read some part of the scripture. I said, why? He said, it, 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 it's, it's, it's judgy. It's judgy. No, don't be a selective listener. God wants you to keep the commandments if you want to live long. Message translation says in verse 11, how do I have pieces this? It says, Dear friend, do not resent God's discipline and don't sulk under his loving correction. It is the child he loves that, he, that, the, that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all this. So important. Verse 13. Happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding because God is a giver of wisdom. Matthew 7 says, 24 says, I'll liken this man to a wise man, the man who hears the word and does the word. And now that I'm thinking about it, see, it's not everyone who hears the word who does the word. It's a privilege when you are able to obey the word of God because it is God that is walking in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. Whenever you are doing the word of God, don't pride yourself in it. It's still God that is helping you to obey him. And that's why it's, it's a big prayer. And you have to pray, Lord, help me not to be a hearer only, but also a doer of the word. The Bible says that is when you can be wise. Happy is that man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding. For her proceeds are better than profits of silver. Talking about wisdom, a wise man's face will be will, will, will shine. When you find wisdom, your life is better. The Bible says because the proceeds of wisdom, they're better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. Talking about wisdom. And all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days uh, is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness. And all her paths they are, are their peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her. And happy are all those who retain her. We're talking about wisdom. The Bible says, don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't lean onto your sensual wisdom. Don't lean onto the earthly wisdom. Don't lean onto the demonic wisdom because there are different types of wisdom. It's the wisdom of God. The Bible says, if you lack wisdom, ask God. But like we know, God gives wisdom, but it's your responsibility to receive the wisdom and now to use it. Now, you can have wisdom and not be wise. Solomon had wisdom. He used his wisdom to acquire 700 wives. <laughs> you can have wisdom and not be wise. I would liken this man unto a wise man, the one who hears the word and does the word. It's, you can possess something and not manifest it. That's what I'm saying. So, you ask God for wisdom, God gives you wisdom. You receive wisdom. Then you need 
to apply wisdom, that is when you become a wise person. The Bible says, a wise a wisdom is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and you are happy if you retain her. Verse 19, the Lord by wisdom founded the earth, and by understanding he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depth were broken up, and clouds dropped down the dew. By wisdom, the Lord founded the earth. Wisdom is the principal thing, Proverbs 4 says. Get wisdom, and with all you're getting, get understanding. You need the wisdom of the ancient of days to know what to do, where to go, you know, how to go about what to say. You just need the wisdom of God. The Bible says even God had to create the heavens and the earth using wisdom. When Solomon ascended the throne, he knew that there was no way he would rule Israel without the wisdom of God. You need wisdom, one, but you also now need to apply wisdom. The only way to do that is when you retain the word of God in your heart. The Bible says in verse 21, My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion, so there will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. You will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Wisdom gives you a good rest because you are doing things that you should be doing and you need God to do that, right? It says, yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Verse 25, do not be afraid of sudden terror nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. It takes God for you to be calm when things are raging, when the storm is raging around you. God says, don't be afraid of a sudden terror. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Verse 27, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. The people who deserve good don't eat up people's salaries. <laughs> if you have something in your house that somebody needs, you know, using it, and you know they it's due them, give it to them. Don't withhold good. I tell people that the greatest good that everybody has that you can give is the goodness of your smile. Commit to a smile every day. Wherever you go, talk to people and smile at them. There are people who are starving. They need that smile. It's, it's so important that you know it's a gift, that, a free gift you have and you can always give. Don't withhold it from people. Kindness, good words, to whom it is due. Say good in everyone around you. When it is in the power of your hand to do it, do not say to your neighbor, go, and come back, and tomorrow I will give it when you have it with you. Do not devise evil against your neighbor, for he dwells by you for safety's sake. Don't do evil to your partner. Don't do evil to people around you. Do not strive with man without cause. If he has done you no harm, don't be a troublemaker. That's what the Bible says in 31. Do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel is always with his upright one. Verse 33. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked but he blesses the home of the just. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. Your home is blessed in the name of Jesus. Surely he scorns the scornful, but gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory. 
but she shall be the legacy of fools. Don't be wise in your own eyes. That's why you need the word of God. So you know what to do per time. I always ask people when they tell me, especially when I'm having a faith-based therapy, you know, they tell me all these words. So I ask them, what has God said about it? No, I've been praying. I said, you have been talking. You have not been listening to God. What has the Lord said about the situation? Go to God. Prayer is not a one-way communication. You are not a radio. <laughs> you need to seek God. That's why you need the word of God. You need to be in God's presence. Wisdom doesn't just jump on you. I ask God for wisdom. I, I, let him just give it to me. No. You need to be in his presence. If you want to inherit glory, the wise shall inherit glory. Before glory came on Moses, he had to be in the presence of God. The wise shall inherit glory. And the opposite of that is shame. But shame shall be the legacy of fools. I want us to know that God is willing to give wisdom. And when you are wise, you have peace of mind because you have direction. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to direct. It gives you direction. We started by saying the first thing you need to do is keep God's words in your heart. It will lead you. When God breathes on you, the Holy Spirit will remind you of what he wants you to do in every situation, in every season. I don't know what you're going through today, but God wants you to know that you only need to ask for wisdom. And then you become wise by being a doer of God's word and not a hearer only. Looks like God doesn't want me to get to Leviticus today. Let's go to the book of Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I'll read from verse 24. Matthew chapter 7. The Bible says, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears the sayings of mine and does not do them will be, liken, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended, the same situation. And the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall. And so it was when Jesus had ended this saying that the people were astonished at his teaching. Now, a lot of people will always, you know, want to compare themselves with, you know, to another person. Now, the same situation, rain's falling, wind's blowing. But the difference between A and B is the level of their wisdom. One hears the word and does the word. The other hears I wouldn't do. And I know that a question, like I always hear from people is, but I am doing the word of God. <laughs> Sometimes I, I like to sit with people that I really know. And I will say, really? Yes? Really? Okay. Do you pay your tithes? Somebody said, yes, I do. I do. I said, for real? Yes. You pay all your tithes? Yes, I pay all my tithes. How much did you earn last month? They tell me. How much did you give? Then they stop talking. You're throwing whatever you want at God? No, God is a precise person. <laughs> I said, the Bible says a wise man hears the word and doeth the word. And that person, even though will be exposed to certain situations that, uh, that is really hard, but that man will be like a rock. You will not fall. 
because God is in your corner. But if you take God's word for granted, if you despise the word of the Lord, you stand to be ashamed. You say, well, why would God do that? God didn't do that. It's a principle. Just like a universal law that says, when you throw anything up, it comes down. God doesn't need to enforce it. They're just forces that are already in this universe. The word of God is the greatest and the highest force. Because it created and established the heavens and the earth. And God keeps talking to us about this word. Treasure the word in your heart. Because it will give you long life. Treasure the word in your heart. Because it will give you health and strength. Treasure the word in your heart. Because it will prosper you. There are laws. Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. On it shall you meditate day and night, that you might be careful to do all that is written therein. He said, then your way will be prosperous and you will have good success. It is a law. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health as your soul prosper it with the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and that word was God. It was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and nothing that was made was made without him. In that word is life and that life is the light of men. The light you need on this earth is embedded in the word. Isaiah 60, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. In the word is life and that life is the light that causes you to arise and shine for the entrance of the word giveth light and understanding to the simple Psalms 119. The, your, thy word, O oh Lord, is a lamp and it's a light. Treasure the word in your heart. Don't joke with it because that is where wisdom comes from. The more word you have, the more doing power that you have. And that is what makes you a wise man. A man who hears the word and does it. A lot of us hear a lot of the word, but the power to do is un un unavailable. Why? Because you are just cramming them. It's here. It has not gone down. You want to be wise. The face of a man that is wise shines. It helps you to know what to do, what to say. God says, I'll give you a mouth and a wisdom that your adversary cannot gain, say, or resist. Treasure the word of God so you can be wise. So you are not wise in your own eyes. Sometimes God's wisdom is the direct opposite of what your brain is saying. Don't lean on your own understanding. What does it mean? You're sick. God says, don't say I'm sick. Say I am strong. It doesn't make sense. No. You have, you need, you have a need. God says, go and give, go and give. And then I'll give back to you. Good measure. I don't give to you before you give. You give before I give to you. Just like you don't harvest before you sow. You sow before you harvest. A lot of people are believing God for God to bless them so they can give. No, you are reversing. That's not wisdom. The wisdom is you give and then God gives to you. Whatsoever a man sows, that is what he reaps. You don't reap when you do not sow. Give. The one that wants that wants to have friends must first of all be friendly. That's the word of God. Before you have friends, you need to become friendly first. So God is always reversing it and you will never understand it because these are the things of the spirit. And the Bible says a carnally minded person can understand the things of the spirit because they are spiritually discerned. My prayer for you today is the wisdom you have received from the word of God today. 
you there's grace for you to break it down. You have wisdom in its potential state. It needs to be converted to another form of energy by walking it. When you walk it, that's when you become wise. And God will give you that grace today to become a doer of the word and not a hearer only deceiving yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you that the word of God will be so planted in your heart that you will bear fruit in 30 fold, 60 fold and 100 fold because you will be a doer of the word thereby becoming a wise man in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to say, I am a new creation today. All things have passed away and all things have become new. I walk in the spirit and I do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I am emotionally intelligent and I'm becoming a better version of myself through a renewed mind. I have the mind of Christ and I understand the things of the spirit. My past is not an obstacle to my future, but it is a testimony. I am stronger than any challenge, and I choose to make the most of every situation and opportunity. I love God. I love myself, and I love people. Today is a good day. And good things will happen to me, for me, and through me. I am brimming with energy. I am overflowing with joy. And I embrace who I am. I strive to learn with an open and a positive mindset. I am time obedient. I am slow to speak. I am quick to hear. I am slow to anger. I walk in love, joy and peace. I am faithful and I'm patient. I have self-control. I am walking in God's purpose for my life. I have an excellent spirit. I am a positive influence and I commit to smiling today in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. I'm Reverend Dr. Olufolake, aka I'm the senior pastor at PFOM Positive Influence Family Outreach ministry you can check us out at pform.org please download the app just flaky if you want to give to pform you can always see you'll see the button give there remember you don't have before giving a lot of people you've had a lot of seeds and harvest and you've eaten both seeds and harvest god is saying to you it is time for you to be wise if you're lacking, it's time to give. It's not time to beg. It is time to give. And God will give back to you. Good measure. Press down, shake it together and running over. I want to thank as many of you that were present virtually or in person for the prayer night in September. The next one is in October 25. Usually that season, I'm always very busy preparing to my birthday week. But this time around, we're just giving it to God. God wants us to pray. If you know, see what is going on you know, in, in the world today, and because election is also coming, God wants us to pray. God wants us to pray for our children. God wants us to pray for our homes. God wants us to pray for our nation. I want you to know that it is the will of God for you to pray please raise your prayer altar have a prayer altar in your home it could be your closet it could be anywhere in your house where you dedicate time to study the word of god and pray i was sharing with a sister the sister said you know what i always pray all day i said that yes it's good to pray all day but see god doesn't want you combining him with everything you're doing just that's not just what he wants he wants you to carry him along everything you're doing pray but he also needs you to dedicate a time that you don't share with any other thing with him and that's why i'll always emphasize on making sure that you wake up early which means you need a discipline of going to bed early so you can wake up to god and pray and meditate and worship God. And then you can exercise and conquer that day before it begins. 
last month the 5 a.m club that book is amazing please if you've not gotten it go get it and read it this month we are reading winning the war in your mind it's an amazing book it's for this month i've finished reading it one time i'm going back again the second time winning the war in your mind craig wrote it please make sure you get that book winning the war in your mind the warfare starts here if you win here you win in your body you win in life so i want you to get that book and read it that's what we are reading in the month of October. I also want to remind us that the 40-day fast starts November 1st. I can't wait for that time. I want you to begin to pray that God in his infinite mercy will keep you and strengthen you with might in the inner man. You will not die. If anything is telling you in your mind that if you fast, something will go wrong, that's not true. It doesn't want to leave you. That thing that will go wrong, I better go wrong while I am waiting on God. This is a time to prove God and say, God, I know you made me, you created me. And I'm, I know I will be whole if my soul is whole. I want to take care of my soul. I want to begin to pray about it. November 1st to December 10th is when we are seeking God. Our fast is an 8 p.m. to a 4 p.m. That is when you start 8 p.m. the previous day, then you break 4 p.m. the next day. And during the fast, please, no alcohol, no coffee, no animal products. I know there's a lot of don't, no, no, no. But see, you'll be amazed at what God will do. We fast in November to prepare ourselves for the new year, for the coming year. We don't want to get into the new year and start preparing. No, we, we do that. Of course, it's good also to give the first month to the Lord in whatever way you want to do it, because that's the first fruit for you as well. Please make sure that you are wise by doing instruction. It's, and you will see that God will give you long life, it will give you health, it will give you, you know, strength, it will give you wealth. That is a law. You don't even need to pray about it. Just walk in his ways and God will come through. He doesn't lie and he doesn't change his mind. His word has been exalted above his name. In the Bible says, it will not return to him void until it accomplishes that which he has sent it for to do. I pray that the word of God will become more important in your life than any other thing. You will live a balanced life, thereby giving the word of God its own place, its own time in your life on a daily basis. And I wait your I wait your testimony because it always works when you work the word in Jesus' precious name. Remember, remember to pray for me. I covet your prayer. Pray for me every day. And just mention me in your prayer. Pray, pray for my family as well. The God will keep us on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Also remember to pray for this prayer altar. The God will build it, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. In Jesus' name precious name we are afraid i love you so much i'll see you same time tomorrow it is communion tomorrow so remember to come with your communion and let's break bread together in 